An NFL kicker and the University of Notre Dame are teaming up to tackle a property problem. Catholic Super Bowl champion Harrison Bucker and Notre Dame are offering a reward for people who find creative ways to renovate underused church properties. The winning idea will receive an, an initial $10,000. The project is all part of Notre Dame's church properties initiative. We go now to Austin Wright, who's co-founder and CEO of MD Keller, the company he started with Harrison Bucker. We also have David Murphy from the University of Notre Dame's Fitzgerald's Institute for Real Estate. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining us. David, we'll start with you. Why did you begin this project? Can you put into context for us how many church properties are being underused? Certainly, and, and thanks for having me on. And um, here at Notre Dame, we have such a unique vantage point in that on one hand, we're a very trusted Catholic institution, so we can approach religious orders and dioceses and really kind of get without any walls up uh, a sense of what the challenges that they're facing. So if you're a Midwestern urban uh, diocese with perhaps hundreds of properties in your portfolio, it's easy for things to maybe fall through the cracks, especially in the contraction. Whereas maybe in Tampa or Texas, you have incredible growth as demographics change. And so mm -hmm. Notre Dame is able to kind of go in and listen and then bring that back here to South Bend, where we have an, the preeminent research Catholic university in the world. So the Fitzgerald Institute, incredible real estate program that encompasses architecture, engineering, mm -hmm. finance, and business. Mm -hmm. And we're able to kind of work through a lot of those problems and get a sense of what's going on. So there is indeed um, a sense of, you know, as the church contracts, we might have schools or convents, uh, rectories, merged parishes where uh, the uh, property owners don't always have maybe the vision or the skill set or sometimes the time or money to really reimagine what those properties could be as beachheads for building the kingdom of God. Yeah, that's all so important. And Austin, why did you and Harrison Bucker want to be involved in this? Well, to put it to put it mildly, we saw that there was a need in the church. There's a lot of properties that are being sold throughout the diocese around the country, and we see that uh, if there's a way to engage diocese organizational structures within the church, whether it be uh, individual parishes, universities, and to reutilize these properties. And meeting David actually a few years ago at Napa at the Napa Institute, mm -hmm. him and I started talking, and we brought him out and met with Harrison and I, and it kind of spearheaded this. But we want really to for people in the church, specifically church leadership, to look at our real estate portfolio as an asset and not a liability. So bringing people together who have a desire to uh, help the church uh, uh, continue to grow and to thrive here in the United States in particular uh, is something that was very much uh, uh, something of interest to us at MD Keller. Absolutely. Such an exciting project. So this is a question for either one of you. What's been the response so far? And can you share any of the ideas that you've so far heard? Well, I Certainly, think one of the things yeah. that's interesting... Please, go ahead, David. Well, yeah, no, we, we've gotten over 100 responses, uh, and we just did the math before hopping on here. 11 different countries going from Australia to Peru to Africa and Europe. Um, and the innovation and the ideas that people have is, is truly inspiring, uh, ranging from how can we repurpose uh, an old convent into housing for Catholic school teachers in a very uh, high-rent neighborhood, um, turning old school buildings into centers for evangelization uh, that benefit a specific community, um, coffee shops, bookstores, you name it. Uh, people have vision. They have ideas of how to bring uh, the hope and uh, the joy of the faith in a new way and reimagine that property and say, okay, this school closed. That's really sad. Mm. But instead mm. of just kind of having it rot and, and sit empty and fallow, they're combining kind of their vision and their innovation with kind of a, a, a zeal that's so exciting to see. And so the response has been uh, much larger than we expected. And so um, the committee, uh, Austin and I have a lot of work to do to, to dig through all these applications that are all very great and range and scope and scale and geographies across the world. And Austin, what comes next? You know, when will the $10,000 be awarded? And is this something you think we might see from more of faith-based groups? Yeah, I mean, it'll, obviously it's going to coincide with the, the conference in October at Notre Dame. They've been great partners. David and his entire group there at the RFI have been phenomenal. But we're hoping, obviously $10,000 is a is a drop in the bucket in the big scheme of things, but we're hoping this encourages people to think outside the box and really bring in that, that church slash business uh, partnership and to be able to work together. And we hope that this really does uh, ignite people in an exciting way to look at how we can utilize the gifts that people in previous generations of Catholics have put their hard-earned money towards, and we can continue to thrive in that way. And whether it's different ventures, I, there's plenty of examples uh, that I met 
uh, or that I heard of when we were in uh, Notre Dame last year that they're doing already around the country. And we're just hoping this really engages that. And we hope it does become an annual thing and something that we can continue to talk about uh, and just continue to bring these various people together in different sectors. And for us, for Harris and I at MD Keller, we wanted to really help in any way we can to bring the right people together to, uh, to bring this mission to uh, fruition. Absolutely. Well, I thank you both for your creativity for the sake of our church. Austin Wright and David Murphy, thank you both for joining us.